Hello everyone and welcome to the part four notes video um, for unit seven. So we're going to work with more uh, properties involving circles. Part four works with target 20 and 21. Um, we're not going to make a huge distinction between the two just yet. Um, just know that it, it's working with parts of both um, learning targets, but we combine them into one section because a similar thing happens um, in both these 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 um, kind of ideas. And so we just want to keep practicing. Since it's a similar skill, we want to practice it all at the same time. So without further ado, here we go. Um, we are working with measure, arc measure, and angle measure again with circles for this part. So whereas in part three, we kind of stepped it back and we, we used arc and angle measure to be able to actually find a length. In part four, we're not going to worry about length anymore. We're just going to keep worrying about degree measure. And so when I say degree measure, I'm talking one of those numbers between zero degrees and 360 degrees, which is our full circle, right? Now, the only thing we know about so far with degree measures and angles and arc measures is that if we have a circle and we have a central angle, let's say it's like 70 degrees, then the arc that it creates, we call it an intercepted arc, is equal to that 70 degrees as well. But the question today, however, will be, okay, so what happens if we have an angle somewhere else on the circle? So notice this angle that I just drew, so that one right there, is on the edge of the circle. It's on my circle. It's not at the center. It's on the edge of the circle. So what happens with the arc measure when we have this kind of angle drawn? And so that'll be the question for the day. And you can see some of those pictures down here. So let's get to it. The theorem says, if two chords or a tangent and a chord intersect at a point on the circle, on the circle, then the measure of each angle formed is half the measure of its intercepted arc. All right, and one thing that's really crucial, and I highlighted it here, I'm going to write it again over here, is the angles we're talking about are these angles are formed on the circle, on the circle. And so it's on the edge of the circle. And that's, so that's everything we're going to talk about today, angles that happen on the edge of the circle. And so let's draw a couple pictures. Let's say this is my angle right here. So we're on the edge of the circle right here. We call this point X, and they intercept the, the circle on the other side over here. Let's call these like A and B. And so this is called an inscribed angle. My angle X there is called an inscribed angle. When it's on the edge of the circle, it's called inscribed. And just like normal, the arc that we create is called our intercepted arc. And so if we want to find our angle based on our arc, the measure of our angle, so in this case measure of angle X, is going to equal our arc, which is arc AB, so measure of AB, divided by 2. That's it. Right, because up above in the box, it says the angle is half the arc. And so if we take the arc and divide it by two, we get the angle. Now, that's what we're going to use basically this entire um, part, but the picture could be a little different. So I'm going to draw a different picture in a different color here. Here's another way for this to happen. And this will deal with the tangent in the chord. So let's say we have a tangent line hitting this circle. Remember, tangents hit a circle in one spot. We'll call that our tangent line. We'll add a couple more points to this line. And so we'll call these three points Q, P, and N. And then let's say from the point of tangency, there's a chord. And it hits this circle over here. And so this will be L. And so now we're talking about, let's say, this angle right here. Now, notice that angle goes through the circle. So it's an angle with our tangent line and our chord. But that's the angle we're talking about now. And so we will call that angle measure of angle. And we got to use three letters. So L, P, Q with P in the middle. 
and our angle is always half of our arc. And this is our intercepted arc right here, right? The one from where our cord hits till it hits the vertex of our angle, that's our intercepted arc. And so our angle is gonna equal our arc, which is arc LP divided by two. And so anytime you have an angle formed on the circle, we're gonna look for the arc it creates and we're gonna divide that arc by two. And that's it. Now we might have to work forwards and backwards. So sometimes we might be multiplying by two. Um, and let's see that happen here. So we want angle BAC. That's right here. Now remember your angle is always your arc divided by two. And so we know our arc is 160 in this problem. So if I want my angle, I need to do 160 divided by two, and that is 80 degrees. And so again, one more time, every single angle that is on the edge of the circle, right? Angle A is on the edge of my circle. It's gonna equal what my arc is divided by two. Now in part B, we kind of have it backwards. I know my angle. I want to find my arc BC. So if my angle equals my arc divided by 2, then in reverse, if we want our arc, let's take our angle, which is 78, and times it by 2, because our arc is always twice as big. And so 78 times 2 is what will be our answer in this problem, and that equals 156 degrees. So. I don't want you to try to memorize this, I guess, but basically if we know the arc and we want the angle and it's on the edge of the circle, we take our arc and divide by two. And so then in reverse, if we know our angle and we want our arc, our angle is half the arc, and so we multiply the angle by two. And that's what's going on in these two problems. Now, in A, B, C, and D down here, this is the other picture, right? A and Our first A and B was this first picture we drew, and our second A and B looks like the second one. But it's still the same idea. Our angle is just our arc divided by 2. And so right here we want angle 1. The arc that's created by angle 1 is this one. It's 172. So the measure of angle 1 is going to equal 172 divided by 2. And 172 divided by 2 is 86. And remember, I just want to keep making you aware, right, all these angles are on the edge of the circle. They say on the edge. This one down here, here's our point where our angle is created. It is on the circle. This angle, right, created right there, on the circle again. So in B, again, we know our arc. This time it's a big arc because it's a real wide angle. But our angle is always the arc it creates divided by 2. So measure of angle 1 equals 284 divided by 2, which is going to equal... 142 degrees. All right, let's keep cruising. Now, it gets a little bit trickier in C and D. Here's why. Here's my angle, once again, on the circle, but it opens this way. And so the arc we're talking about is that one. And we don't have any numbers for that. We know the other side. The other side is 128. And so we want to get this arc measure first. Well, this is just the rest of the circle. So this arc measure will be our 360, which is our whole circle, minus the 128. And so this part of the arc is 360 minus 128, which is 232, right? Now, that's not our answer. Our arc is just 232. We still need to find our angle. So measure of angle 1 is going to equal our, just our arc divided by 2. But we just had to find what this arc was. And so now that we've got it, we do 232 divided by 2. That'll tell us what angle 1 is, which is 116 degrees. Same idea in D, right? Here's where our angle is created. It is on the edge of the circle. The arc we need to know to answer this question is that one. We know the other side. So let's do 360 minus 234 to get the side we want. That's going to tell us 126. And so now our angle is always our arc, which is 126, divided by 2. And that is 63 degrees. All right. So anytime, no matter what your picture might look like, if we have an angle on the edge of the circle, on, 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 on. So if we have an angle on the edge of the circle, 
our angle equals the arc divided by two. All right, now with these kind of problems, let's work backwards a little bit. So we want to find X, which is an arc on the right side of this picture, and we are given an angle. This angle is on the edge of the circle again, right? Right here, it is on. So the arc I've highlighted, the green one, has to be twice as big as our angle, right? And so we'll take 96 times 2, and that'll give us what our arc is on this side. 96 times 2 is 192. But then remember, we don't want that number. Our x is the other side of the circle. And so x will be 360 minus 192, which equals 168 degrees. And so x is 168 degrees in this example. Now, recognize we just worked in reverse from the problems up above, right? Up above, we had our arc, and our arc is twice as big as our angle. So we take our arc and we divide by 2. But if we have our angle, right, like here, to get what your arc is, you're working in reverse. So we don't want to divide our angle by 2. We want to multiply it by 2 because our arc is twice as big. Same thing in B, right? We have an angle. It's on the edge of the circle. It's opening up to this arc. So if I times it by 2, I know this arc is 208 degrees. I don't want that arc though. I want the other side where X is. So X will be 360 minus 208, which should give you 152 degrees. And again, that's what X is in this example. Now a little bit of algebra starts to get a little bit more complicated for C. Remember this angle is on the edge of the circle. So your angle is half of your arc. And here's our arc. And so our angle, which is 2x plus 1, equals our arc divided by 2. And so this is what we want to solve. 96 divided by 2 is 48. So 2x plus 1 will equal 48. And then we will subtract 1 from both sides. 2x equals 47. And then we'll divide by 2. And we'll get that x equals 23.2. Right? And so we directly applied what we already knew, angles equal arcs divided by 2. But then we just had to use that algebra to solve for x, right? All right, let's keep moving. Now, in D, it gets a little bit trickier. I think here's our angle, right? It's on our circle. That box there means we have a 90-degree angle. And then our arc is the 4x plus 8 piece. And so remember, your angle equals your arc divided by 2. And so let's watch this algebra here. Right? Let's watch this algebra here. So our 90 equals our arc, which is 4x plus 8, divided by 2. And we've worked with this a lot in the last couple uh, units. And so remember to cancel... Um, the bottom of a fraction, we can just multiply both sides by the number that's in the bottom, right? So if I multiply both sides by 2, these 2's will cancel. And that'll just leave me with what's on top, which is 4x plus 8. And then on the left side, I actually want to do 2 times 90, which is 180. And now I've got an easier way to solve for x, right? I just have to subtract 8 from both sides and then divide by 4. So when I subtract 8, I get 4x equals 172. And then I divide both sides by 4, and we get that x is going to equal 43. And so the thing I want to just remind you here again is we did exactly what we normally do, right? Our angle equals our arc divided by 2. But then I didn't want this fraction involved where my x was. So I multiplied both sides by 2 so I could cancel that fraction and then solve for x a little bit easier. All right. I think we'll be able to finish up um, the rest of these notes in just one more video. And so um, thank you very much. Check back into part 2 of our notes video here in just a second to get E through the rest of the page. Thank you very much.